Welcome to Dollars and Data. Today we take a look at consuming JSON files with SSIS 2012 and PowerShell. Here's our usual agenda. Now the motivation for this is that we would like to import a JSON file into SQL Server. Microsoft has a recommendation for 2016 that's very similar to how they would suggest you handle XML imports today. That is, they recommend importing a file with open row set and manipulating results with special functions. The point of this video, however, is to assume we don't have 2016. We'll use PowerShell functionality that's been around since late 2012, and we'll rely on two PowerShell 3.0 functions in particular, convert from JSON and export CSV. Now, be aware that the video does not demonstrate importing the CSV into SSIS. That's a well-known process that we'll, we really don't need to cover. There's too many other blogs that will cover that, or documentation for that matter. Admittedly, too, this solution is not as seamless as a third-party tool or an SSIS Dataflow script component, perhaps. But it is a good solution to be aware of. First, it's relatively easy. Second, it leads to a CSV that we can easily import into a data flow with great control before it ends up in a SQL Server table. Finally, it illustrates PowerShell in action. Now, besides not being as seamless as we might like, it has the following limitations, which I'll let you read. On the topic of JavaScript, this stack overflow thread that's being pointed to leads from a nested JSON on the left to a flattened version on the right. That's still not the final format we want for a CSV, but it illustrates what can be done with JSON's native scripting language. A quick note here is that the JSON file we're using today is the same one that was produced in a prior video, and those videos and the code are pointed to here. With regards to dependencies, we've used PowerShell 4.0 for this example. However, 3.0 should work fine as well because it contains the functions that we're really focused on. Let's move on to the demonstration. So here we are in our VM environment, and the first thing we'll do is recap how we constructed a JSON file. And again, this code goes back to a prior video, but we'll go ahead and summarize quickly. We've got a batch file that's up here. Uh, here's the contents of that batch file. It will go ahead and call the document DB data migration tool. It'll pass some arguments along the way. Here's those arguments. A couple of that are very central is a response file describing the SQL that we'd like to see used. That SQL actually does not call any contents of a SQL server table. It just happens to be a CTE that produces a specified number of rows worth of data. And ultimately, that information gets shot out to this JSON file. And again, that's really what we want the data migration tool to do, convert from a SQL query to a JSON file output. So let's run that. All right, so quickly we see the results here, this JSON file. And that JSON file, by the way, has this structure. Now, it's only got three records that I'm showing here versus 13,800, but it has the same flat tabular structure. So here I've opened up the PowerShell script that's really central to the demonstration, and it contains three scenarios that we'll review. The first scenario is shown here at the bottom of the script, and it deals with a nested JSON. And that's really not what we're going to be dealing with. The contents of the file that we just generated do not have a nested JSONs. Nonetheless, I think it's an interesting uh, scenario to review. So we'll step away from this example, and we'll show what happens if we paste this text, this JSON, into this online JSON viewer that I'm partial to. And we get this view. So if we wanted to flatten that, I just wanted to point out that it is possible with the right PowerShell commands to do so. And we're not going to get into them. And as a matter of fact, for that matter, we're not going to export to a CSV here. But let's just run enough of this script to see the flattened result here at the bottom window. 
with F8, and there's the result. Now I'll move on to the flattened tabular example that we are going to concentrate on, but this time I'll just throw a few records again into this here stream so that you can play with it to your heart's delight without fumbling around with another file. You can just emulate a data set that you'd like to experiment with through this here string technique. And we'll run this, selecting, by the way, only a couple of columns, only a subset of the columns possible within that JSON uh, structure. So we'll run this, and there's our result. And then finally, we'll go to our third scenario. This third scenario does create the, S, or the CSV, I should say. Uh, it passes in the name that we'd like as an argument. And along the way, too, it shows what can be done with PowerShell with regards to documentation. This is a great thing for anybody to keep in mind, documentation, and trying to uh, keep that documentation, that metadata, as close to your code as possible, make it, others for, uh, make it easy for others to maintain. Um, let's take a look at how that could be used. We'll open up, oops, wrong one. We'll open up this shell and we'll run a get help commandlet against the PowerShell that we've got on the left. And here's what comes back, an echo of all the information that's tagged within our PowerShell script. So that's it. I'm not going to bother to run this right now. Let's go ahead and run essentially this, this same exact set of commands by calling this PowerShell script via SSIS. So here's the actual SSIS package that we'll be providing. And it's got a process task on its control flow surface. We'll look at some of the arguments that are given. First, we point to the PowerShell executable. That's just typed in literally. Then we have some arguments that need to be passed. Those are provided as a uh, variable through a variable. We'll evaluate that variable and we'll see what the results are. And over here to the side, I've got a better look at the results. The first thing we want to tell PowerShell uh, is that this PowerShell script uh, should be run, and we do that through a bypass of a security policy that Windows has got that ordinarily would not allow PowerShell scripts to run. Then we come down to the heart of things, which is to run this particular PowerShell script that we viewed just moments ago. And you'll recall that within that PowerShell script, uh, there was a chance to put in this name of the CSV that we'd like to see piped out. And the contents of that are piped out to this folder. So let's run this SSIS package. It doesn't take very long. And there's your results. So 13,800 rows worth of data. And there we have it. So that ends our demonstration. Just to wrap up, I'll say that there's pros and cons with using PowerShell to convert JSON documents to CSVs. The pro certainly is that it's easy. It's very easy to do so with the two functions that are provided. The con, of course, is that there are file size limitations. But still, it's an important technique to be aware of. And also, it's important to know that it is relatively easy to call PowerShell from within SSIS. Well, that's it. And thank you again for viewing another edition of Dollars and Data.